On the edge of real and cyberspace, there's one place you can go and you've found it. Welcome to the Nightwise.com podcast, a one and only podcast with hacks, tips and tweaks for cross-platform geeks. My name's Nightwise and I'll be your host on this episode of the Nightwise.com podcast, season 15, episode 5, Locked Down Lifestyle, part 1. If you want to know more, find out everything about the show on www.nightwise.com and there you can uh, subscribe to the Nightwise.com media feed. Get all of the shows uh, dropped into your podcatcher automatically or you can just uh, look us up on YouTube, the website, or you can follow the show on Discord. Because we're doing this live, all in one take, dropping in the jingles, playing some tunes and fubbing up everything that we might want to say to you, so you got to bear with us a little bit. If you haven't joined the Discord yet, do so, because all the geeks are there. You can hang out, learn, tell us what you're watching, tell us what you're reading, and tell us how you're geeking out. So let's get this show on the road with a nice tune. Got an Italian producer here giving us some nice synth waves. Details are to come. nightwise.com podcast with hacks, tips, and tweaks for cross-platform geeks. Love me some synth wave and some retro wave. You kind of like that out here on the nightwise.com prod, uh, podcast. Italo Brutalo is the name of the uh, Italian producer, and the track is called Avion, so you can find it on the uh, YouTubes and probably on Spotify uh, or SoundCloud. I don't even remember where I found it, but it's a great track. You're listening to the nightwise.com podcast with hacks, tips, and tweaks for cross-platform geeks. 
So what do we got lined up for you today? Well, we're talking about the lockdown. I know everybody's been talking about the virus and everything that it entices over the last couple of months. But um, especially for us as geeks, it does have a little bit of an impact. So today I want to start off a first part of a two-parter episode where I talk about how whole this, uh, this whole lockdown lifestyle has impacted us as geeks and how you, as master of your technology, can actually organize your day and your life and your technology to find a balance between work and life. Because you know how it is. Uh, pretty soon, you know, you're working from home. Uh, you're not going out with friends anymore. You're spending more and more time behind the computer. And before you know it, everything kind of melts into one big gloop of entertainment, work, free time. And before you know it, you don't even know what day it is anymore. You don't, can't, you can't, day of the week it is anymore. You can't remember when was the last time that you actually wore pants, when you did a shave or when you brushed your hair, you know, stuff like that. And I wanted to um, give you some pointers on how you can let technology help you organize your day and get the most out of this new normal situation. So I've got a couple of tips lined up for you and I'm also looking for your feedback. So if you want to tell us how you get through this, well, very interesting period of the year that's been going on since, I don't know, March, and it will probably be, you know, lingering around for quite some time, we love to hear from you. You can do that by going to our Discord and just dropping a voice message over there so we can play it on the show. So, a couple of tips lined out for you. Today we are going to talk about your environments, your digital and analog environment, and how to structure it to let technology work for you during the lockdown. With all that out of the way, let's get into the meat of the matter. The human brain is a funny thing. Because it's really, really, really old. Uh, you know, we've been um, being homo sapiens for, I don't know, what, 50,000 years or something. We've kind of, you know, had some routines, way that's, ways that we did things for about 50,000 years. And one of those ways, uh, well, basically was that you would live in the cave and you would hunt on the savannah or, you know, in the fields. And those two things role didn't really mix you know you didn't hunt in the cave then you had a problem and you live if you lived on the savannah you would get eaten by predators so over the 50,000 years of our evolution our brain has kind of gotten used to certain locations for certain activities and especially when we take a look at the modern world uh, right up until march it was kind of like you know you live at home and you work at work and your brain is triggered to recognize the surroundings that you're in and, you know, associate a certain activity and a certain state of mind. And for some of you that have been doing homeworking, you know, for a longer time, you know how it is in the beginning that it's really hard to um, get into leisure mode uh, when you've been working from home for uh, an entire day or the other way around, that it's really hard to find your groove when you're working from home. And that's partly because your brain scans your environment and it says, hey, this is the geeky bedroom or den that I'm in and this is where we play. So this is where I, you know, uh, start getting ideas about, you know, Linux projects and God knows what. And this is the office where my boss is and where my colleagues are, and this is all about work. Now, once you start mixing up those environments, your brain gets confused. It actually needs some time to associate one situation with the other and let go. People who are, you know, doing commutes sometimes say that, you know, I'm very stressed at the office and then I drive home and then I put on some music and I've got this half hour drive and then I can let work go. Well, if the distance between work, your home office and home, I don't know, your living room is like one flight of stairs, your brain has a hard time switching off. And especially with the lockdown, this is becoming kind of a problem because what I've seen over the last couple of months is 
colleagues doing longer and longer and longer hours and finding it very difficult. And for me personally, that was also true of, of, you know, just letting go, you know, leaving work where is work and, and trying to find your groove and technology isn't helping us either because it chases us around everywhere. You know, you can uh, access your email from everywhere. Yeah. You can access your work email from literally everywhere. Add in some notifications that kind of, you know, mess up your concentration or your state of mind. And before you know it, work, life, hobbies, it all melts into one and it doesn't become a very agreeable situation because you don't really have boundaries anymore that help you switch on and switch off. So one of the things that I have been personally um, working with, working, uh, was using different locations. I thought like, okay, this is the challenge that your brain has. Let's help my brain out. So let's start by looking for different settings and locations to do different things. And this means that you will have a certain place where you work, even from home, and a certain place where you play and a certain place where you hang out with your family. And I kind of encourage you to keep those things different if you can. Uh, for me, it's um, I'm, I'm, we're lucky we have um, an, uh, a little building next to our house that houses the uh, offices, the office of my company and my training room and my studio. So this is where I literally come to go to work. So, you know, you know how it was in the lockdown in the beginning, you know, you get up and get coffee and then it's like, oh, great, I don't have to commute anymore. I just sit around and then in your pajamas, you would shuffle to your office and you sit there all day and at lunch you would say, oh, shit, I need to shower, stuff like that. And it was really nice in the beginning, but it got old really fast because my day started to melt into this one setting that I would never leave the house. Now I try to give myself a different location to do work. So when I have to work for either our clients or my company, I come to this little office here and I sit down. I literally cross a piece of my lawn and I sit here. And uh, when I'm done at five-ish or whatever, when I'm done, I literally walk away here and close the door and work is done. I don't take it with me. Now, I know we don't all have the luxury of having two rooms where you where you play in because, or where you can, can work with because uh, my other office inside the house, that's my geek, that's my geek room. That's, I've got, you know, all kinds of geeky stuff and projects and stuff that, you know, uh, that I love to play with that distract me. I, and I do that there. So I walk into that office and there is no work. There's no work email. There's just play. We don't all have the luxuries of having two rooms, but take a look at it. If it's possible, maybe you have a spouse who's working from home as well. Maybe you can, you know, make a little deal that you work in her, in her or his office and he or her, he or he or she works in your office. So you literally switch rooms. And the trigger that I'm trying to make here is that you will have um, a change in surrounding that will tell your brain, okay, work is done. And this is, you know, now it's time for something, something else. And it will also help you to kind of shut down the stress and the anxiety that sometimes comes with, with you know, having, having a stressful job. This can also mean just changing positions. I don't know, maybe you have a, an office or, or a table that you sit on. Maybe sitting on different sides of that table might help, but breaking up those locations are, uh, is very important. Breaking up locations is important, but also breaking up your posture. Um, because... When you do everything from one location or from one office or from, from one chair, and as a geek, you are, you know, doing your work things behind the computer, but also geeking out behind the computer, pretty soon you're going to be spending the entire day behind the computer and just, you know, track those hours. You might, might scare you that you go like, oh, Jesus, I've been here for like 12 hours straight. Now, at the office, it's different. When you commute to work, you get up, you go downstairs, you catch a train or get in the car and blah, blah, blah. You kind of move around a little bit. But when you're working from home, the, the distance that you do 
uh, the postures, uh, the different postures that you assume are a lot less varied. It's mostly get out of bed, shower, coffee, sit, and get up, maybe eat, sit, uh, get back up, watch Netflix, sit, go to bed. And if you have, you know, one of these smartwatches or on your smartphone, that uh, things on your smartphone that track the number of steps that you take, uh, and you can, you know, go back to the logs of before uh, all this, this, this whole lockdown thing. You can see that the number of steps that you've been taking that might have been really small in the beginning is even getting less because you don't move around. Um, that means that you'll be in the same posture that you'll be sitting down for hours on end. It's not like work where you get up to a meeting room or you get coffee or, you know, colleagues invite you out to lunch or you have to catch your train. Maybe you have to run for your train. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's that. Um, or, you know, uh, but when you're working from home, you don't have that. So changing your posture is really important. Try to do things differently. Um what I personally have, have incorporated is that um, I sit down, work behind the computer, but I have put my webcam uh, and the monitor uh, the, and the monitor that's connected to the webcam. Um, it's also connected to my computer. I've actually put that on a table that is higher, so it's not on my desk. It's actually right next to my de- desk, and it's a little bit higher. So when I have a meeting. I stand up. I force myself to stand up. I don't have a standing desk yet, um, but standing up does give you a little bit of a different dynamic. One, it's good for your circulation. You're not sitting down all the time, but also when you're doing meetings, and especially during the lockdown times, try this out because you will be standing up, being able to you know, um, move around a little bit, move your shoulders, move your hips, while you're talking to your colleagues, it A, helps you to pay more attention to the meeting. Uh, and two, because you have a different posture and they're all sitting down, you have a different attitude in that meeting. Uh, and I found it to be uh, very interesting how to change posture between how it feels when you're doing a meeting sitting down or how it feels when you're doing a meeting standing up. Funny thing is, I'm actually recording this standing up. Because we did, uh, we do a lot of uh, webinars with Brain Rangers and a lot of trainings, and that's all online, you know. Um, we invited over a uh, TV coach, somebody who uh, she's a she's a Belgian actress, and she coaches speakers, and she has television experience. Uh, we co- we asked her over to come and give us some tips and and hints on how to do you know professional webinars that that you know resemble television because right now. When you take a look at webinars, there's a whole evolution there where it's really going towards television-style productions. And one of the things that she said is, why the hell are you sitting down? You should be standing up. So she moved our studio where we recorded webinars, moved it into a standing desk. Uh, I'm actually standing behind it. And what I know is that when you're standing up, the dynamic is totally different uh, when you're doing stuff. So really try that out. Try... um, you know, uh, switching postures. There's a lot of tech out there that lets you do this. Um, that can be a standing desk that's really, you know, expensive, or it can just just be, you know, a couple of boxes underneath your existing desk or underneath your laptop that just let you stand up. Even if you don't have meetings and you're coding, just, you know, put a big box underneath your laptop that's kind of sturdy and just stand up behind your desk and work that way to give your neck, your shoulders, and your hips um, a little bit of a variety. The other thing that's also important is that you're going to uh, have to look for things that don't happen behind the screen. Um, You're a geek. Uh, We all are. Most of our lives are spent behind this screen. Uh, You record a podcast behind the screen. Um, you uh, chat with friends behind the screen. You, um, I don't know, uh, browse social media on your phone behind the screen. You read a book on an e-reader behind the screen. Pretty much, uh, pretty soon your entire life is going to be spent behind screens. And I started to 
to notice this, especially during this time. You know, I would get up, I would take my phone and I know, have coffee and look at my phone and then I would sit down and have breakfast and read my ebook, And then I would go upstairs and I would watch the screen uh, for work the whole day long and I would go downstairs and then I would be on my tablet behind the screen and then we would watch Netflix before we went to bed behind the screen. And pretty much there was no part of our day anymore that wasn't spent behind the screen. So I started looking for other activities that did not involve looking at a flat surface about, I don't know, two feet or one foot away from your nose. But, you know, you still want to have your information drip. That's true. So, you know, take up walking, take up cycling and look for those activities uh, that are not behind the screen, but are still geeky. I mean, reading, uh, listening to audiobooks. um, on your on your walk or on your 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 jog or when you're behind the bike or even I don't know uh, if you have a little garden out there try doing that just looking for activities that don't um, happen behind a monitor or behind the screen and audio of course is great you can listen to this podcast while I don't know taking up gardening or or whatever is a hobby of choice but it really does help you. Um, kind of switch off, kind of have different postures, kind of get a get a breath of fresh air on always sitting behind the screens while still, while still getting your geeky content. I mean, you can listen to audiobooks, you can listen to podcasts. Um, there is a great app out there, I'll put a link in the show notes, that's actually called Balabolka. And uh, Balabolka is a Windows application that transcribes text into speech. And you can, si- switch, uh, you can switch voice synthesizers and tell it what to use. So even if you just want to read a book uh, and you're okay with the fact that Stephen Hawking's going to read it to you, you can even try that. Uh, services like Pocket will read websites to you uh, whenever you want to. So, I mean, audio is a very powerful uh, medium to get you away from that screen to have you do different activities one of the things that uh, also comes with moving while listening uh, is that it's actually and i read a book on this it's actually very good for remembering stuff I'll give you uh, a little glimpse into my into my past. Uh, when I used to study, when I was still a student and I would have my exams, I would sit behind my books and I would sit behind my screen and I, I, I didn't get anything done. I didn't get, I got constantly got distracted, uh, started listening to radio, doing all kinds of things. And I just didn't study, you know. So what I started to do is write down question and answer cards and go walking and just quiz myself constantly and i would go walking in the fields and i would you know explain my exam questions i would re- read the card you know what is this and then i would walk past a couple of cows and i would explain it to the cows and by constantly doing this while walking i built up this visual map inside of my head it's really funny because when i got to my exams and i would read the question i would go like oh yeah I I did this quiz when I was walking next to the, you know, next to the, the meadow with the cows and I explained it to the cows and it was this and this and this. So all these pieces of information that I had to remember also got a visual cue for a certain location and that helped me remember it. It's really funny, but it, it really works. And also, um, when you are walking, it, you have better circulation and you remember things in 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 quicker and you retain information longer so try it it's 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 an active way of of uh, getting your health um keeping your health up to speed while also retaining information better it's like upgrading the read write speed of the sd card in your brain so looking for activities that don't involve a certain location is something that is also pretty important And the last tip I want to give you guys when it comes to location um, is uh, firewalling locations. This is, I can't actually say how important this is. And this is a tip that I got from uh, somebody that I interviewed for the Brain Rangers webinar. 
Uh, she's my yoga teacher, but she's also a lawyer. Eh? So like KD said, you know, ooh, yoga lawyer knows how to bend the rules. That's a very, very funny one. But um, she read a lot about, about technology and psychology and stuff. So I had her over uh, on this topic uh, a couple of weeks ago. And one of the things that she mentioned was uh, the importance of firewalling locations. And that means, for example, you don't work uh on the couch in the living room. You don't um, play uh, games when you're sitting behind the desk that you work. So kind of giving yourself boundaries of what happens where, this comes back to the fact that your brain is going to associate location with activity and emotion, you know, the way you feel. So to help you turn off, there have to be some ground rules. And for me, that's... uh, there are a couple of things that really work for me. When we go out walking, I put my smartphone in my backpack. Um, there's a rule here in the house that we don't work in the living room uh, on the couch. Uh, there's another rule that says that um, we don't watch Netflix uh, on the computers that we're working on. Stuff like that really helps me to structure my day and firewall activities both in time and in location. Eight o'clock in the evening, you know, uh, we pull the plug on all the party stuff that uh, is the office and the company. And then it's like, you know, we have to have some boundaries because otherwise that's especially what I'm seeing both location wise and time wise. You know, you end up working from 10 to 10 uh, and your entire day becomes this, I don't know, uh melting lava stream of goo and stress and you just want to cut that up and and use technology to help you do that so that was a part about technology but about location but you know uh, there's more than location nightwise um we also have a big uh, i don't know um digital environment that we work with and structuring your digital environment we talked about analog environment right now is also something that you should really pay attention to and that's what we're going to get into in the next chapter nine out of ten jawas listen to the nightwise.com podcast (laughs) these days Well, everything happens on your computer, right? You know, you work on your computer, you play on your computer, you do whatever you want to do on your computer. It's all there. It's all happening there. So keeping track of that digital environment, that digital world that you're into is also very, very important and managing those as well. Now, what's a digital environment to me? A digital environment is a collection of um, applications maybe an operating system, um, websites, information streams that are surrounding a certain um, activity. For example, um, the digital environment that I have for work is uh, maybe my phone if they call me uh, and a Citrix environment I work with and they have uh, Skype for business and, and, and Outlook and stuff like that. You know, that's the digital environment uh, that relates to me to work. I also have a leisure digital environment. It's a, you know, it's a different mail uh, client and, uh, you know, it's Discord and it's Reddit and um, maybe some games that I play and maybe another operating system. That's another playground that, you know, that's a playground I walk into that has a different setting, that has different things that um, I need uh, to get stuff done. So managing these uh, digital environments is also very important, especially if they're happening on the same machine. You know, if they're happening on the same, um, in the same office or something. You know, splitting those up is also very important. Because we talked about giving your mind a break uh, uh, by switching locations. You can also do so by working digital, uh, by, by separating your digital environment. Now, one way to split up work and play is, or work and leisure, uh, is, of course, by just using different machines. And um, one of the things I've done is uh, I have uh, a couple of machines here 
and uh, one is my uh, IBM X1, uh, which to me is my work machine. Here I do everything up uh, I have to do for the client as a consultant, and here I work on whenever I um, want to uh, have to work for my company. Now, I know, you know, I'm a cross-platform geek, so you have this tendency to say like, yeah, I can do anything on anything. And yes, that's true. Yes, you can. Yes, you can do anything on anything. Uh, you know, you can do any activity on any computer, but also, you know, that way work never switches off. You know, it just follows you around on whatever the machine that you're working on is. So I've kind of broken that up. I've got my IBM, my ThinkPad, which is for work. I've got my MacBook Pro here, which is for creativity. And creativity can be for, for my company. Creativity can be for the nightwise.com podcast. But it's, it's my place where I have a creative outlet. Uh, so when I see this machine, when I touch this machine, the creative side of me comes out. It goes like, let's go broadcasting. Let's go podcasting. Let's go do a webinar. Let's go, you know, do this. I don't do dreary tasks on here. The third machine that I have is an old uh, Acer Aspire. It's a 17-inch laptop that I was donated because the owner said, it's broken. Turns out that they had, had installed Windows 10 on this 2014 machine, and the Radeon drivers are not supported by Windows 10. So they would get little, little black lines on the screen while working, and they got frustrated with it and threw it out. Uh, put Linux on it, works fine. Uh, and for me, that's like a, a it's a 17-inch thing that I can never take with me anywhere. Um, but it's, it's uh, put Linux on it. And it's my place where I, you know, where I, where I, where I do stuff for nightwise.com or where I experiment. It's just a different machine, a different digital environment. And it kind of helps my brain to go like, okay, uh, this is something different. Now, if you have only one machine, of course, let the technology work for you. Dual boot the machine if you want to, you know, go Linux for play and Windows for work or whatever you want to so that your brain also knows what is work and what is play. Don't do the trick where, you know, what I did in the beginning where you smear work onto your play machines or to your leisure machines and the other way around because it's really going to mess up your concentration and uh, it's not going to help you you know, turn off the stress that comes with, you know, being, uh, being at work. If you don't dual boot, well, you might as well have enough, uh, I hope that you have enough CPU cycles and some memory lying around to do a virtual machine. Why not, you know, put work into a virtual machine that you can actually shut down? Or you can put uh, your leisure activities into a virtual machine, your private activities that you actually shut down. A virtual machine is also a great way of connecting differently. And the thing is, when you kind of switch operating systems, switch machines, it really helps you to turn off. Because if you're on a machine that gets notifications from work and, and, and maybe also from, from your private life and your friends and your leisure, it all gets cobbled together and you can re never really relax never really turn off and really never really focus on one thing so virtual machines there are also very interesting if you don't have a virtual machine that's okay a lot of it happens on uh, you know a lot of our activities are in the web on the web anyway so uh, how about a different browser hmm? um, firefox for work uh, chrome for play um, i don't know also there with different bookmarks, different browser histories. For me, um, the entire company uh, of, of my entire company, you know, Brain Rangers is all run straight out of the browser. Nightwise.com is uh, aside from the production stuff is, is run straight out of the browser. I mean, it's all uh, accessible via the web. Um, and, you know, you have your, your, your bookmarks and, and, and your places where you go and mashing them together really killed my vibe you know it was like you know trying to write a script for the podcast and then i would see the bookmark up there that would said uh, you know brain rangers mail and i would say oh yeah let's quickly check that and you would check it and a mail would come in and then blah, 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 you do that and uh half an hour later my my leisure time was was gone and i was back into work mode and that way it never stopped so i said enough um, I'm going to have a different browser, different browser with a different bookmark bar, um, a different browser history. 
uh, to help separate those two digital environments. Um, and crossing the bridge when it comes to your uh, passwords uh, that you want to remember and, and autocomplete is, is done by, you know, just use something like LastPass, uh, which is also a very interesting app uh, that helps you do that. You know, you can just store your LastPass passwords online uh, and have the browser plugins in both of your browsers. I've got one extra app that I want to talk to you about, and that one is called BlockSite. And it's an extension that also works on Firefox. It works on Chrome. It even works on the new Edge uh, browser and block site is a site blocker and redirector so you can ask block sites to block certain sites for you and redirect them uh, to another location and what really works for me is installing block site both on my work browser and on my you know free time browser whenever i'm on my free time browser and i hit the webmail for work I get redirected to, I don't know, uh, what did I set up? Uh, Discord or the nightwise.com podcast. You know, it automatically redirects me. And when I hit, uh, you know, some kind of Reddit on my work browser, it automatically redirects me to my email, to my company email. So that kind of helps me fight the distractions and separate the environments. And you can even set timers on these things that it says like, I'll block Facebook from you from, from nine to five or something, and then you can play with it. Uh, helps you with your concentration, but just like blocking Facebook between nine to five to stay focused at work, you can block work email from, I don't know, from five to 9 a.m., uh, from 5 uh, p.m. to 9 a.m., to help you switch off from work. And I really like that app. I've, I've had it on uh, a blacklist at a couple of sites that steal my distraction on my uh, work browser. And I've uh, blacklisted all of my work stuff on my leisure browser. And Block Site is a great extension for that. So those two um, things I would really, um, I would really, you know, uh, give you uh, an incentive to, to try it out. But your computer is, of course, not the only place where you do things. You have your mobile devices, you know, and these are even worse because basically we carry them around everywhere all the time. But one of the things that you can do is um, what, I, what helped for me is separating my home screens. Um, separating my home screens so that all of my work apps and links are on one home screen and that all of my uh, other apps and, and, and stuff are on the other screen and just separating them by screen that really helped for me and of course um, taking a good hard look at your notifications and this is something I can really get passionate about because it's so important um, let me see which book that I read um, it will come to me in a second um, where the author says um, with the coming of the modern day smartphone, things really changed. Because uh, in the beginning, um, when the first iPhone came out, the goal of um, the smartphone was to kind of have a phone that plays music really well and that can do the activities that an, a PDA can do. So that you basically except when you get a call or a text, decide when to pick up your phone, right? So, okay, that's, that's fine. But with the coming of social media, those things have changed because social media companies make money when you look at your phone when they tell you to, as much as possible, please, because they want to harvest your attention. And they do this, of course, by using aggressive notifications and before you know it you know if you have linkedin and facebook and twitter and instagram you will get dings all over the place i'm i'm um i uh, had uh, a dinner a couple of months ago with uh, with friends of ours they're they're technically not very savvy she bought this this uh, insane uh, insanely expensive galaxy s9 s10 got to check s10 um, and she had it installed by default and, you know, we were having coffee and she would get notifications constantly. 
And as she, she asked me, she was like, oh, it's really annoying. Can I turn this off? And then I just looked at the notification history and all of these apps were pinging her for her attention. Now, she wasn't looking at the apps all the time, but, you know, the ding, 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 consistent noise really, you know, killed the vibe. Really also, you know, we were having dinner. It was annoying. And then I, you know, looked at all the notifications and I went like, wow, look at all these companies that are trying to get her attention. And pretty much, pretty soon, your uh, smartphone is ruining your life and is ruling you. Your notifications are distracting you and they're actually drawing your attention towards the screen. So you can look at the screen and not get any added value for your own life, but you do get an added value for the companies that are trying to sell you ads. Having this into your mind is really, really important. You know, this is not like the BlackBerry age where you would get an email and it was actually for you. Now you get stuff like, you know, a notification from LinkedIn. Hey, so-and-so that you haven't talked to in six years posted an update. I don't care. Ooh, NetApp is live. And I went like, I don't care. I want a notification that serves me and not the other way around. So managing those is extremely important. So you can uh, do a little bit of a triage. You can you can uh, you can um, organize those, and that helps uh, you say what's important, and what's not. So the first question is, you know, what notifications are essential? You know, your mom calls, maybe that's essential. Your wife or your spouse calls, maybe that's essential. Maybe there are things your your kid says, "Daddy, you forgot to pick me up from school." Hmm, maybe that's essential. There are a couple of communications that are really essential. And those are the communications that you have to have. And think about it. Who can send me a message that I have to get? And when? Those notifications, you say like, that's okay. They can call me. The second one is what is acceptable. For example, what do I want to get? Uh, for example, if there's somebody at our ring doorbell ringing our door, well, I, uh, ring our bell, I would like to get that notification. That's acceptable for me. When I get, um, I don't know, a message from the nightwise.com podcast guys on the Cantina channel or, or on another channel, that's acceptable to me. If I'm subscribed to another chat room and somebody posts that over there, I don't need a notification. That's, that's not acceptable for me. That's, that's not, that's trivial. Because that's the third category, that's trivial. What stuff is trivial? What notification can I live without? Somebody replied to a post that you get on Reddit, do you need to know that right away? Or will you, you know, just open up the app and see like, oh yeah, somebody replied. You really have to think about taking control. And this is also especially true with work uh, notifications. um, That at some point, you know, I... I switch off. I go like, no, no, it's it's done. We're done. Uh, so all of these notifications. So turn off all of your notifications by default, and start switching them on one by one. Uh, for example, for me, essential is phone calls, but only from certain people, which means that if I put my phone in silent mode, uh, or in 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 do not disturb mode, uh, in, uh, in 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 night mode, um, only these calls come through. And other ones don't. Uh, that really helps. You get a call, it's from somebody important, store them in your contacts, go to your do not disturb settings and say only calls from my contacts I want to get and the rest don't ring. I'll see what it is and I'll call back when I can. Experiment with that, try that out. I thought it, uh, for me, for me it was really, really um uh, I don't know, refreshing to do it that way. And pretty much I started to see that, okay, My phone is becoming a tool again and it's not bossing me around and giving me notifications uh, that I don't want to get. It's not running my life. That do not disturb mode, that's really powerful. You know, you can set it automatically that at, I don't know, 11 uh, 11 p.m. when you go to bed, uh, notifications don't don't come in anymore. And, and, you know, at 6 a.m. in the morning, they start coming in again. I switched that. I went like, you know, my phone goes into do not disturb at 6 p.m. in the evening and only calls and messages uh, from people in my contact list get through and then I'll see what I'll do. Then I'll decide if I look at my phone. And that also takes away a lot of the, I know, it it breaks the attention of the moment. 
uh, when you get a notification and it sometimes kills the vibe of a certain moment and it distracts you and um, it your phone will be running your life especially in lockdown that's that's a that's a, a really important one that you have to have to take into account so that you literally give yourself a chance to enjoy things on your uh, rhythm and not on the rhythm of the notifications and lastly i come to the very important one and that's the ability to concentrate because uh, i found that one especially hard uh, now i am doing things behind the computer all day long there used to be a time that i would be kind of offline i would be on the train or i would be uh, sitting in a train station and i wouldn't have a laptop with me or i wouldn't be behind the screen and that time was very valuable to me because it was a moment that i could sit down and focus and there is so much that we can learn there is so much that we can gather of information that will help us enrich ourselves but we just need the time i mean we're geeks we're connected to the internet this is the most powerful piece of technology that enables us to read any book that you want to enrich your lives get information and contacts that would have been impossible for somebody even even i don't know 30 years ago just look at all of these 80s uh, episodes if they wanted a book they had to go to the freaking library and hope they had it now if we want a book we go to amazon we buy the book so there is so much out there there's uh, that we can use to to you know just like in star trek say you know become better human enrich ourselves improve ourselves and now with the lockdown there's a lot of time that's coming available to you i mean you don't have to do a long commute anymore uh, you don't have to take the train to work anymore. You know, you find yourself with some free time. Use this free time to learn. But, you know, it's hard because you get constantly distracted and it's really hard to focus on something to get in the groove. And one of the things that I do is pull things offline. Switching off, disconnecting your device might seem something like, whoa, this is really extreme. <laughs> what are you going to do with the computer when it's not connected to the internet? Good question actually do stuff with it um i pull my i I use my favorite app uh you all know it's um youtube dl to download my youtube videos and watch them when i want to watch them without the whole distractions of youtube that uh you know get me looking at another video and reading the comments and blah 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 um i do the same thing with books Uh, i put my book on my e-reader and my e-reader only has one or two books on it so i don't skip around books all the time I take websites with articles, I put them to pockets, uh, I I shove them to pockets so they get pulled offline to my tablet, or I make PDFs out of them and I send them to my tablet. And then when I really want to learn, I put the wireless connection of my tablet to off. And then I can do stuff offline and really get into the groove and not get distracted or have the urge to go do something else. The other hand is go for minimalistic interfaces if you can. I mean, don't browse around websites, subscribe to the websites, put them in your RSS reader and look at them that way. So you control very heavily what you're looking at. Takes care of all the ads and the distractions. That's a good thing. And also you can structure what you want to structure and you can consume what you want to consume. My RSS reader is my go-to page because I've called down on the blogs and the sites that i've subscribed to i've even put in some reddit uh, sites there that i follow but i don't want to be distracted by the reddit app for example so i pulled them into my uh, rss reader i use eno reader great cross platform it's uh, available on the web ios and android app works everywhere and eno reader for me is really nice to call down on the noise and just focus on the content uh, minimalistic interfaces are one of the things that I also love. If you can get an app to interact with a service that is minimalistic, uh, it's really uh, handy for your creativity. And uh, I've been working with um, retro interfaces uh, lately. Um, one of the things that I really like about retro computing is that uh, sometimes it's not connected to the internet and it brings a computer back to what it's actually meant to do. Sometimes it's a tool to achieve a task. You know, you want to write something or you want to read something or you want to watch something, pull it onto a machine that's not connected to the internet, fight the distractions. And if you take a retro machine, 
you sometimes don't have the clutter that modern day operating systems and applications and websites bring with them. Case in point, I got a G4 uh, iMac, the, the the little lampshade Pixar model uh, from a neighbor, and I've been putting Mac OS 9 on it, I've putting Office on it, uh, and I've been writing uh, some blog articles on it while offline on a computer that's like, I don't know, 10, 15 years old. No, almost, no, almost 20 years old. Uh, and... Office is not cluttered, the machine is not connected, it's not fast, uh, you don't surf the internet because basically you can't, but it helps you after a while to focus on the task that you want to do. So minimalistic interfaces can be retro interfaces, uh, it can be stuff like, I don't know, Focus Writer is a great app to, uh, if you want to write stuff on your um, on your machine without having, you know, a a word interface with 15,000 buttons that you want to press. Um, There is also a great app out there that has a web version, iOS and Android, that's called Simple Notes. It works great when you want to blog on your tablet. It's kind of like OneNote, but not on steroids. It's the anorexic sister of OneNote. But just for doing what you want to do, take the notes, no fancy buttons, no fancy stuff. Um, I've even been playing around with WordPerfect in a virtual machine, WordPerfect 501, you know, command line interface and, and a, a, well, a DOS interface basically to write articles. And I started to do, notice that the fewer options that my text editor had, the more productive I became. And that is something that really helps. Plus, it's fun to do playing around with the retro age to fight the distractions, pull content offline and watch stuff and do stuff on you know on your terms when you want to and uh, in a place where you can really focus and that is the important one when it comes down to your digital lifestyle when it comes down to really you know getting down and taking control of your lockdown lifestyle And that's all we have time for this week on the nightwise.com podcast. We'll be back on the next episode and we might even do a live stream. So check out 1506 pretty soon where we dive into the second part of the lockdown lifestyle and we talk about filtering your content, working on your routines and setting your goals and how to let technology uh, get the most out of this new normal uh, where we are all, you know, experiencing or where we're all confronted with i want to thank you guys for listening see you guys on the flip side until then let technology work for you and uh join the discord server if you haven't uh, already because we're having a lot of fun there links are in the show notes and we will see each other on the other side of the edge of real and cyberspace you have been listening to the nightwise.com podcast the show with hacks tips and tweaks for cross-platform geeks Send your feedback, questions, or start your own personal flame war by contacting us directly on feedback at nightwise.com. You can support the show by sharing it with your friends or writing us a nice iTunes review at www.nightwise.com forward slash iTunes. If you have some credits to spend, click the PayPal button on the nightwise.com website to help us pay the bills. Just remember, there is real life outside cyberspace. But it's not all that important. 